Want to know how you can balance a massively complex chemical equation without using a chemical equation balancer? You can actually get it done in less than 10 minutes. I'll show you how in this video. I'm Dr. K and welcome to Chem Simplified. Basically, there are four steps all together. The video on the basics of using algebraic method to balance equation is available in the description box below. So this is the equation that we are going to balance in this video. There are eight types of atoms in this equation and we're not going to break any sweat balancing them. So let's start. The first step is we need to add in the coefficients. So I'm going to add in my a to i in front of each of the term. All right, so now it's time to form some equations for each of the element. So we're going to start with k. We have 4a plus 2b on the left and 2h plus i on the right. Next, we have fe. A on the left and 2D on the right. So that gives us A equals 2D. Sulfur is going to be a little bit more complex since it appears in multiple terms on both sides. So on the left we have 6A plus C. On the right we have 3D plus 3E plus H. So this is what we got. Next is carbon. We have 6A equals F. Nitrogen. 6A equals I. Chromium, 2B equals 2E. Hydrogen, 2C equals 2G. Last but not least, oxygen. That's going to be the most complex equation we'll form. We have 7B plus 4C on the left, 12D plus 12E plus 2F plus G plus 4H plus 3I on the right. So this is what we got. So setting up all these equations should only take few minutes. Before we move on, it's good to just double check to make sure that we got all the equations right. Um, so that way we don't waste time solving all the wrong equations. Uh, before we move on, so I'm going to simplify the two equations for chromium and hydrogen to B is equals to E and C is equals to G. Let's move on to the third step. So I've rearranged a little bit the equations that we formed earlier on the left hand side of the screen. And we're going to start by setting the value for one of the coefficients. I'm going to set A is equals to 2. That way we can find the value for D, F and I easily. So the reason I go with A is equals to 2 is just so that I'll get D is equals to 1 rather than D is equals to 1 over 2. It's not really a big deal to get fractions at this point because we'll take care of it in step 4. So anyway, I went with A is equals to 2 and I got D is equals to 1. Plug in A is equals to 2 in the 6A equals F equation. That gives us F is equals to 12. Now we also can do the same for 6A equals I. And that gives us I is equals to 12. Next, we'll work with 4A plus 2B equals 2H plus I. Plug in the value for A and I will give us 2B is equals to 2H plus 4. Simplify that, gives us B is equals to H plus 2. Since B is still not solved, I'm going to add that to our list of equations on the left hand side. Okay, moving on to the next equation. We continue doing the same thing, sub in what we already know for A and D, Simpli simplify a little bit, and we will get C is equals to 3E, plus h minus 9. Since it's also not solved yet, we're going to add that to the list of equations on the left hand side. Picking up from our last equation, which is c is equal to 3e plus h minus 9, let's try to reduce it to two variables. From our list of equations on the left, we know that b is equal to e and that b is also equal to h plus 2. So let's sub in the equation for e and that will give us C is equals to 4H minus 3. We're almost there. Even though it doesn't look like it right now, we only have one gigantic equation left and two small ones for B and C. These are our remaining equations. Looking at B is equals to H plus 2 and B is also equals to E, I'm going to clean it up so that it reads E is equals to B equals H plus 2. And I'm going to do the same for C is equals to 4H minus 3 and C is equals to G. Clean it up. 
g is equal to c equals 4h minus 3. So now we actually have three equations to work with. So we're going to start with the gigantic one, the whole thing, write it down. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to sub in the values, uh, whatever values that we can in the gigantic equation. So subbing in h plus 2 for b, h 4h minus 3 for c, 1 for d, h plus 2 for e, 12 for f, 4h minus 3 for g, and 12 for i. Expand out the equation and simplify and we get h is equals to 91 over 3. Now let's use h to solve for the rest of the coefficients. So plugging that in gives us e and b equals 97 over 3. And we'll do the same for g and c, subbing in the value for h, that will give us 355 over 3 for g and c. So great, we're done with the hardest part, and now we're going to move on to the final step. So the final step calls us to substitute in the values that we have found for a all the way to i, and this is what we got. Since we have fractions with 3 at the bottom, we're going to need to multiply the entire equations with 3 to get whole numbers for all the terms. So this is what we're going to get after we multiply, and this is the final product. So we're all done. Please subscribe if you find this video helpful and click on that bell icon so you'll get notified on new videos. For more info or practice questions, please head over to camsimplified.com. You'll find blog posts related to the video and some practice questions to test your skills. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.